To get started with testing, we need to install a couple of dependencies. So as a development dependency, we are going to be installing Jest. We are also going to be installing the Jest environment, JS DOM, and we also need testing library React. We need testing library React, JS DOM, and we need to install the types for Jest. Go on and execute this command. Up next, we are going to be creating a configuration file for Jest. And in this configuration file, we import next Jess, and then we create a Jest config. We create a configuration that we are going to pass to the create Jest config function. After this, let's head over to our package.json and our scripts section. We are going to add a test script, which is going to run with Jest. So Jest test, and this is going to run in watch mode. Now let's create a component and because we are building a count application, let's have a button component. So inside the components folder, we're going to create a button.tsx file. And this is the JSX. So this button component takes in the label and an onclick function. Let's write a test. So to write a test, we're going to create an underscore underscore test folder. And in here, we're going to write the, our button.test tss file which is a naming convention for writing our test and just test runner is going to pick this up automatically so inside this file we need to import some couple of things from react testing library and we need to import our button component now we have a describe function this describe function does nothing then it helps to group our testing files and we're going to give this a name in this case our button component and then we pass a callback function and inside this callback function we are going to have our different test groups our different tests so we have the test function which is available globally and we want to test two things so first we want to test that this button component renders the label correctly and we have our callback function which we write our actual test we also want to go on and test that the onclick prop in this button component is being uh, called whenever we click on the button so we're going to call this test say so we're going to test that it calls the onclick whenever it's being clicked so let's start that label renders correctly and first we need to have our label we're just going to give it a name of click and next we need to go on and have an onclick which is going to be a just mock function and in this just mock after this just mock function let's go on and render our components so we're going to render our button component like this and because we have rendered our button component we need to pass the props so we're going to pass the label prop and we are also going to pass the onclick prop with the button components rendered we can go on to query the DOM and we do this using screen and we're going to search by text of label this is going to give us access to the button element and now we can go on to have our expectation so we expect this button element the test contents to be equal to the label with this let's go on and run our test so we're going to come back to the terminal and run npm run test or it could be npm test now just test runner is going to search our file for any test file and it's going to run that file and we see our test results our test is passing the other test passes even though we don't have any actual test in it so let's go on and write the test so let's test that the onclick is being called whenever you know the button is clicked and again we get the test by we get the button by test id and we have the label and we have our mock function we go on to render our button and after we render our button we go on to query the button element by test id and now we need to click on the button element and after we click on the button element we can go on and expect that this button this function has been called once with this we run our test again and we see that our test is passing now let's change it to twice and let's see what happens and we see our test fails because actually this button was called just once which is what we expected so you see over here it expected um, twice but it was called once so let's go on and fix it back to once to one and now we save so this is our button component and it's we expect it to work as expected because our test is passing so up next, we can go and create a display component. And the idea for this display component is to just display our count. It's going to be a pretty much straightforward component. So it's just going to be a component that displays the count. 
it receives the count as props which is going to be of type number nothing more going on in this file so let's go on and test our display component so i'm going to create a file in our test folder which is called display.test.tsx and inside our display test.tsx first let's have a couple of imports and let's also go on and import the display component straightforward we are going to write our test so we have our test and we're going to test that it renders the current count we are going to have a count variable and then we are going to go on and query for our um, display elements after we have obviously rendered it so we're going to expect the test content to contain a count which is going to be equal to five if we go on and save we see that this time around our test is passing but if we change the count to let's say a value of one we see that our test is failing because actually it received five and we're expecting one all right so to make our test to pass we need to have the correct test value which is in this case the count variable which is equal to five so this is our display component. Now let's make use of these components that we have created. Let's go over to our app folder, which is our routing route folder. And in our page.tsx, which is our home page, let's have a use client because we are going to be managing state in this component. We have some couple of imports from React. And then let's go on and import the components. We import the button component and we also import the display component. With these components imported, we have a count state that we start at zero. We have an increment function, decrement function, and reset function, which just goes on to update the state, the count state. In our return component, we have a H1 counter application, and we are going to have our display component, which is going to display the counts, and then we are going to have our button to increase the count. We are also going to have our button to decrease the count, and also our button to reset the count. With all these rendered on the application, let's go back to the terminal. I'm going to stop our test from running at this point in time, and we are going to build up our application with npm run dev. So now let's go back to the browser. And in the browser, we see that our application works as expected. Up next, let's go into integration testing because now our home page is making use of the different components that we have. So in our test, I'm going to have a home.test.tsx, which is going to test that the display component and the button component works together. So we obviously have our imports where we are going to import our home component coming from the app page. And then we have our describe and inside our describe, we go on to test that the initial count obviously starts at zero. And in this test, we are going to go on and import render and fire event from screen because we are going to make use of these. And inside our test, we are going to render our home component. After which we render our home component, we are going to get access to our display element. Once we have access, we're going to check the test content contains the count at zero because the count should be zero initially. I'm going to stop our development server and start up our test server with npm run test. And in this instance, you see that our test, all our test is passing. Up next, let's test that the count increase when the button is clicked and we have access to our increment button, display button. We go on and click on the increment button and we expect the count to now have a value of one. If we go on and test this, we see that our test is passing and let's test the decrement button. We render our home page. We go on and have access to the decrement button, the display element. We click on the decrement button and now we can have our expectation that the count is minus one since the count was zero and we see that our test in this case is passing now let's go on and test the reset functionality we render our home page we have access to our increment reset and display element we click on the increment button and the reset button and our count should be zero and in this case our count is zero with this done, let's go on and test network request. We create a mocks folder and we are going to create a server.ts file. We need to install some couple of dependencies. In this case, we are going to install Axios and we are going to install MSW for mock service workers. With these installed, now let's make use of it. First, we are going to come in our server and import setup server. And to use a server, we need handler. I'm going to create a handler.tsx file and in this file we are going to create handlers handler is an array we need to import rest 
from MSW because REST is going to give us access to different HTTP methods. Now, .get needs is a method that takes in the URL and it also takes in a callback function which is going to call with the request, response, and context object. Now, we can use this to customize the response that we intend to mark. And in this case, we are going to return a response and we are going to set some values. One value we can set is the context status, which is going to be set to 200 to say our request was successful. And we can also set the JSON response that we intend to receive. In this case, we are going to set it to this JSON, which is an object with an ID, a title, and a body, because this is what you actually get from the JSON API. And here we have our handler, we create our server, we pass it to setup server, and we export our server. We come back to our application and we are going to create in the root folder, we are going to create a setup test for jest. So we're going to create a jest setup.ts file and we are going to have, we have access to lifecycle methods. So before all, this lifecycle method works before all tests, after each, after all tests, and after all, we go on to close the server, which is a lifecycle method that runs once after all tests. With this just setup, we can go on now to start our test scripts again. So npm test is going to start our test in watch mode. Before we can go on to fetch data, it's important that we create a postcard component that we are going to render in our application. So back to our component folder, I'm going to create a new folder which I'll call postcard.tsx. And this is how the postcard looks like. It just takes in this props ID, title, body, and it renders it on the user interface. With this done, now let's go back to our home page and let's make use of this postcard component. You can obviously write a test for this component. In our page.tsx, down below, first I'm just going to have a heading. And after the heading, next I'm going to have our use effect. So our use effect is going to run once when this component is being mounted to the screen and it's important that we go on and fetch our data. Our dependency array is going to be empty and we are going to be making use of some states. So we're going to set the post and set post state and up we can define an interface for our post. So with this defined, we're going to have a function to fetch the post. We can go on and import Axios from Axios. This fetch post function is going to go on and fetch our post and also update our state with this set post with the response.data. Now we have this, let's go on and render our post to the screen. So we render our postcard component, we pass it to the post and we expect to see our post on our screen. So let's start our application using npm run dev. And here we have it, we have our post on the screen. So let's go on and write our test. So for us to write our test, let's come back to our test folder. And here in our home.test.csx, let's test that we are actually getting back the response that we intend. Remember, we mocked this response. We get access to the post title. Remember that we are using await. So await here because this is an asynchronous function and it's important for us to await. We expect the test content of the two types to be post1 and post2, and in this case, our test passes because that is what we mocked it to be. This is testing in Next.js, and I hope you enjoyed it.